Today I'm taking a look at the Hypetex colored carbon fiber that's currently available from Composite Envisions, and later in the video I will cure this in some epoxy resin so that you can see what the colors look like before they're cured versus after. This first color is called oak and it's basically just dark brown, and here that is compared to a plain piece of carbon fiber that has no coating. This second sample is blue called chapel. And here that one is compared to, again, a plain piece of carbon fiber. Next sample they're calling Margot, and this one is sort of an eggplant purple. And here it is compared to plain carbon fiber. Now this sample threw me for a loop because it just looks like carbon fiber, but it's jet black, it has been coated with something, and when you compare it to plain carbon fiber, it does have a bit of a more matte effect. It loses some of that three-dimensionality, but we'll see later how that looks once it's cured in resin. Last color in this sample pack is called Yaz, and it's green, but it's more of a blue-green, definitely not the lime green that's more typical for the dyed composite fabrics. Here is that one compared to plain carbon fiber. For reference, here are a few other options that are similar colors to some of these. This is the copper reflections, and the carbon fiber isn't dyed, but it does have that copper thread running through the fabric. And then there's also a dyed fiberglass uh, that's orange aluminized, which sort of is in the same color family as this, but much lighter, and of course that's a fiberglass, not carbon fiber. For the blue color, there is also a Reflections that has a blue metal strip running through it, and also a blue aluminized fiberglass. Again, this is much lighter, and it's fiberglass, not carbon fiber. But it's interesting to see how similar some of the colors are. For the purple Margot color, there is also a metalized purple color. Again, very similar coloration, but the carbon fiber itself is not dyed, just this metal thread running through the fabric. A thing to note with the dyed fiberglass is that treatment is only on the front side, whereas these dyed carbon fiber pieces are dyed on both sides, so there is no back or front. For the green, there's really not a whole lot in this type of color because it's such a blue green. The closest I had was this metalized green sample and it really doesn't compare if this is the type of color that you need. So that's the whole sample book and a few comparisons. Now let's go ahead and just take these out and see how they look cured because sometimes these colored products can look very different when they're in the raw state versus after they've been cured in resin. Typically items will get a little bit darker, a little bit richer. So I'm going to test out how this looks. The first thing I noticed when I took off the packaging is how stiff this product is. It feels much like a weblock or pro finish type fabric, only maybe even a little bit stiffer. So whatever treatment is on there is locking those fibers together and making it much easier to work with. It doesn't unravel very easily. However, the trade-off for something that has a treatment like this where it's much easier to work with is this is not going to contour around complex shapes as well as an untreated twill would. You can get quite a lot of flexibility with a plain twill carbon fiber to wrap around complex shapes. With this product, the weave is going to stay together much better, but you will not have as much ability to wrap around those contours without any wrinkling. The other important element to note here is that the colorant is added after the fabric has been woven. As you can see, when you remove a piece of the toe, there is a difference in where it was weaving around the other piece. There is some of the black carbon fiber showing through. So if you were to distort the weave enough to reveal that, that could also ruin your cosmetic finish. So it's just another point to note here when working with the fabric and watch out for that.
For comparison purposes, I'm taking that piece of plain carbon fiber that was in the sample book and removing that from the packaging. You could see immediately that this was much more difficult to remove from the packaging because it starts fraying and distorting. Its ability to distort is great if you're trying to fit a complex shape, but for making a small sample like this, it was pretty much impossible to work with without any sort of treatment on there to prevent it from unraveling. Because this was so difficult to work with and kept unraveling as I tried to place the small sample, instead I used a piece of pro-finished carbon fiber for this comparison. This way I was able to cut it out neatly like the other pieces and place all of these together in one sample sheet. This epoxy resin has been degassed in a vacuum chamber and then once it's spread onto the sheet of Teflon peel ply, I still used a heat gun to pop any bubbles that I added in while applying the resin to the sheet. I trimmed a nice edge on all of the carbon fiber samples so that I could place them together in an interesting pattern because it is so rigid compared to a plain fabric and stays together so well, it's possible to place these pretty precisely. Whatever treatment is used on there is not affected by the epoxy resin. So the fibers don't start to expand, they don't start to break apart as you're adding the resin. It's fairly resilient, so you're even able to pick up the items and reposition them if they're in a bit of a wrong spot. But again, the trade-off there is, of course, if you're trying to fit around a complex shape, it's just not going to conform as easily. But for mostly flat parts, this stuff is fantastic to work with in that sense. Because it stays together and you don't have the carbon fiber getting all stuck in your resin and messing up the pattern if you're trying to do something a bit more complex. Again, with the resin added on there, I went over it with the heat gun to pop the bubbles that I added in during the application process and topped this off with another sheet of the Teflon peel ply. I used a roller to remove the bubbles that were trapped between the carbon and peel ply. This did end up shifting the pieces slightly, so that's something to keep in mind. It does slide around on this peel ply. In a mold, you may not have that sort of problem, but I did end up with some slight gaps between my squares. But this does remove all the bubbles very thoroughly and create a completely void-free sheet when working with a woven carbon fiber. Now with forged carbon fiber, it's a bit more prone to pinholes. So even with the rolling, you may still get some pinholes in that, but with woven carbon fiber, it's a pretty great technique. I cured this in a vacuum bag and then removed all of the molding materials. The surface that's created with this method does have a slight texture to it from the Teflon peel ply. So here are those cured parts compared to the original dry fabric. For the jet black sample, the difference between plain carbon fiber and this product became much more apparent after curing in the epoxy. The plain carbon fiber, that's the control group, is much more three-dimensional and almost looks more like a graphite gray color, whereas the jet black hypetex carbon fiber is more matte, less three-dimensional, and more of a true black. 
The oak brown color also changed pretty significantly in the epoxy resin. It's more of a bronze reddish brown rather than the plain dark brown that it was before the resin. One last thing to note, the jet black isn't currently available in a large size roll, only as this sample, so I'm assuming there's not yet much of a demand for such a niche product where you're taking carbon fiber that's generally considered beautiful with its three-dimensional effect and spraying something on it that makes it more flat and looks a lot more like woven fiberglass or Kevlar rather than carbon fiber. So that's it on the overview for the Hypetex colored carbon fiber. <laughs>